So by browsing through YouTube, I found this amazing video that piqued my interest. It's, it's basically morphing between objects with the match cat, but it's in After Effects. So I'm going to recreate it in DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump right into it. Okay, now that we are in Resolve, we can actually uh, just add our Fusion composition and jump right into Fusion. Okay, now that we are in Fusion, let's add our background. And we can add our background like this and let's make some type of a gradient. Let's just make something like this. Okay, and for the first color, we can choose whatever, so... Let's choose something like this, maybe a bit on this side. Okay, that looks nice. Let's go get our second color. Well, something like this looks good. Uh, let's add a grid, click on the background and then shift space and just type in grid. And now we have our grid. Okay. We don't want any major lines. That looks okay. Okay, let's go to the grid and just bring our blend down a little bit so it blends in better. Okay, so firstly, in his video, he has morphing between two objects, between uh, the square and the circle. So let's remake that in DaVinci. Let's add our background. We can rename it this to square. And let's add a gradient too. And... We are gonna choose radial. Okay. We have something like this here. Let's choose our inner color, something dark. Maybe even a bit darker. We can choose something like this. And our, our outer color will be something lighter on the eyes. Well, we can we can work with this. Okay, first let's add our rectangle mask. And just put it in something like this. Okay. Let's make it a square. So let's just copy this over and paste it in. Like this. We can rename it this to circle. So we know what we're working with. Okay. So now we can add a transform. Let's just bring it here. And for our circle, we obviously need a lips mask. So let's connect that. Okay. Let's add an expression to our height and connect the width. So now when we adjust our width, everything will be adjusted accordingly. So let's get something like this. It should be okay. Let's get our transform. Now, yeah, we, we can make it a bit smaller. Just a bit. Okay. Now it looks good. So let's get to this side. So now we have our square and our circle. So let's so let's first do a basic shape transformation. And we can do this, that by going to our transform, making a keyframe on center, going some 25 frames forward, making a keyframe again, and just bring it over to our circle like this. So now we have a movement like this and what we actually can do with our rectangle uh keyframe our corner radius on the first and wow, 20 is the last keyframe on the last keyframe just make it circle our width needs to be a little smaller so so it fits a or, so it fits like a circle should okay now as you can see we have a ba basic morph Let's just unmerge this. And as you can see, it morphs from square to the circle. But we can actually do that easier with the match cut. So let's do that. Let's get rid of this transform firstly. Oh, let's get back to the square. We can merge our circle back here. Okay. Let's connect everything. So now we have our square and our circle. Let's add in our transform. Let's get here. Keyframe it on the first 
and on the 20th frame and just move our position on the 20th frame to here okay now now that we have that set up we can actually go to the circle transform go to the center make an expression now that we have our expression what can we do we can go to the transform of the square and pin it when we pin it we go back to the circle transform and just connect our circle expression to our square expression and now they move together okay next we can go to the first transform open the spline select everything zoom to fit select all keyframes and then just press s and t and just type in something like 50 and okay now on frame 10 it should be the peak of our animation so let's go to the frame 10 and now i'm going to show you how to match cut in fusion so click on our square and then just go here you see in and out points you just on out point just type in frame the frame you're on so i'm on frame 10 i will type in 10 and for our circle it will start from 10. so now we have something like this it just match cuts to the circle and it basically fools the human eye so with that with that out of the way let's match cut like he did from match to the sword that looked really cool and i want to recreate it so let's jump right into it for now we can delete the basic ones that we already did let's get our media in so we have our sword and our match. Let's just like this. Like both. Press F2. Let's get this match and this is sword. Okay. So now let's connect them. First, let's get our match. Now that we have our match, we can actually go to the merge and increase its size to somewhere around here. It should look good. Okay, let's connect our sword. Is a bit bigger so go to the merge and just get our size down to somewhere around the same now they look as they should let's go to our match shift space get in our transform and just go get our match to somewhere around here so let's close this media pool okay, on the 10th frame we can actually keep him our center and then we can go forward 30 frames like this and keyframe it again now that we are keyframe it again just adjust our x value on our center we can put somewhere around one like this and we have a basic movement okay we can actually keyframe the angle too so go to first frame and to the second frame and keyframe the angle and then just put 180 on the second keyframe so now we have some movement and it looks something like this okay in our spline tab just click fit all and then select keyframes and then press s press t e if you don't have it open and type in something like 80 on the both side so now let's find the peak of our spline it should be somewhere around 30 frames i think yep it's ramping out right there okay now that we have done that we have the basic animation for the match we want to do the exact same thing for the sword but how can we do it in an easier way we can actually copy this transform just click on the transform and copy it and then you can go right click paste the instance so we are going to paste the instance of this transform on the sword so it will move the same way and everything you can also press Ctrl, Shift, and V to paste the instance. And let's get it to our sword. Now they don't match up quite exactly, but we can fix that by adjusting our scale in the merge. So let's just get our match a little bit smaller. So now they move at the same speed, which is nice. Okay, let's go to the match transform, go to the spline, and find the peak of the line animation so that would be somewhere around 30 frames yeah 
I would say 30, so let's go here 30. Go to our match, click on the match, and go here and make it 30. And go to our sword and let it start from 30 frames. So now we have something like this. Let's go to frame 10 and it merges into a sword, which looks awesome. And if you want to make it even nicer, we can add some motion blur when we play it. It looks even more realistic, so it sells the effect even more. And you can actually match cut however you want. It doesn't have to be with the rotation. You can match cut with the size, with anything actually, as I will show you now. So let's reset our center and reset our angle. So now go to our size on the frame 10 keyframe it uh, go to frame 40 keyframe it again so on the frame one we can actually drop the size down and on frame 40 it will zoom in and as you can see we can on frame 40 we can even make it bigger for a bit a bit bigger like this and then just go to spline again and go to our size and zoom to fit press s and then just go again 80 and 80. so now we have something like this let's zoom it in and just match cuts to our sword so now what we could do we could actually make it a bit nicer so let's just select the sword and the match with the merges and just press shift and bring them up from the main timeline and then add a background node connect the first merge get our alpha down and connect everything over and we can actually add something like flow and apply mode we can put it under color scale let's bring in our red a bit more so let's get our glow size up and maybe just our glow down just a bit so now it looks even nicer it has a glow behind it and never so yeah with this technique you can actually create some pretty amazing edits and some pretty amazing stuff can be created much cutting so if you learn something new maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing and if you have any questions leave them down below in the comments and i will try to answer you all and if you're interested in learning how to edit like magnets media in davinci resolve then this video is for you